Hello and welcome to part 7 of this Taekwondo science series on sine wave motion. In today's video I'll show you how the sine wave is different when you're stepping forwards or backwards or turning compared to when you're doing a technique on the spot. In the last few videos I showed you how you go into a neutral position at the end of stage 1 of your sine wave motion. When you're doing a technique on the spot, you don't stay in that neutral position for long because as soon as you get there you start raising the body and wind up for the technique, which is stage 2. But when you're stepping or turning, you tend to stay in that neutral position for longer because when you're stepping your legs need to cross over and when you're turning you need to finish the pivoting before you move into stage 2. For example, if you're stepping forward in walking stance, you bring your rear foot forward and your body goes forward. Now when your centre of mass is above your balancing foot, you'll be in a balanced position. It doesn't make sense to start raising your body before you're in that balanced position because you'll be pressing your foot down to raise your body and this will give you a reaction force which has an upward component to raise your body but it'll also have a horizontal component which will be working against your motion which will slow you down. So it's best to wait until you bring the centre of mass beyond your balancing foot so that when you press down you'll still get that upward component but this time the horizontal component will be in the forward direction helping you to accelerate forward and get more power in the technique. So stage one of your sine wave motion is going to take longer if you're stepping or turning compared to doing it on the spot. And this is because you stay in a balanced position for longer. It's worth identifying two different phases for this stage one. There is the phase where you're moving into the balance position, let's call that the approach phase. And there's the phase where you're already balanced but you may be crossing your legs over as you're stepping or pivoting as you're turning. And we'll call this the transition phase. So whether you're stepping or turning, you need to keep your body in a relaxed neutral position during the transition phase. And this means keeping your knees bent and keeping your centre of mass low. When you're pivoting, keeping your centre of mass low means you'll balance much easier. Now how does the transition phase affect the sine wave motion curve? Let's look at three different examples. In the first example, going from walking stance to L stance on the spot, like the 21st movement in Chunguntu. And in the second example, going from walking stance to L stance while moving forward, like the ninth movement in Chunguntu. And in the third example, going from walking stance to L stance whilst turning, like the eleventh movement in Chunjitu. For example one, I've already shown you the sine wave motion curve in the previous video. There is no transition phase because as you bring your front leg back to a balanced position, you're already in the position to go straight into stage 2 without delay. In example 2, the approach phase takes you to a balanced position, but if you raise your body too early during the approach phase, then you'll have to stop raising it during the transition phase and then raise it again for stage 2. This means your sine wave motion no longer looks flowing, it looks like you're dropping twice. Actually, many people do a motion like this, where they go up, down, up, down. To avoid this you need to stay low for longer during the approach stage and then start raising it slightly during the transition phase. This means the sine wave motion curve will look like this. You can see that the curve is now much more smooth and flowing and it blends well with stage 2. Example 3 is going to be the same as example 2 although the amount of time you spend during the transition phase depends on the angle you turn. Obviously a 90 degree turn will take less time than a 180 degree turn. Although a 180 degree turn doesn't quite take twice as long as a 90 degree turn because the bigger the angle, the swifter you should pivot. Well I hope this video clarified a few things for you, but I wouldn't be surprised if it raised more questions than it did answer them. So if you do have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer them although it's much easier for me to explain it in a video rather than in written text. So in this series, eventually I'll cover so many points, probably your questions will get answered in the end anyway. Now in the next video, I'll explain a little bit more about the approach phase and the transition phase for different stances, because I only showed you for the example of going from walking stance to L stance, and there are some differences with different stances. So I hope you join me for that, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.